tonight's guest is Santiago. Santiago, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, thanks so much for coming on. We appreciate your time. Santiago, please give us a brief bio on yourself. So, my name is Santiago. I am 23 years old, and I'm currently a business student. And at the time when I had my encounter, I was in a small town in northern Canada, well, the northern part of my province, and yeah, studying philosophy there. Philosophy? So, you're a philosophical type of person then? Yes, very. Yeah, I figured you must have been. From what I understand, Santiago, you've had your fair share of paranormal experiences without even including the dogman encounter you're going to tell us about tonight. Please expand on that for us. Yeah, for sure. So it started off as me not really knowing what was going on when I was younger. But then gradually, as I got older, I started realizing that I could feel things and sometimes see things. So I've had experiences with uh, like spirits, ghosts, demons, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, it's, it's, it's eye opening. It's better now where I actually understand what's happening from before when I was younger, when I, I had no idea. When you first saw that dog man, you thought it was a demon. Why was that? And do you still think that's what it was? I did. I thought it was a demon because well, it was, it sort of looked like, like a typical idea of a hellhound. And it was incredibly evil feeling. And because of that, I was not aware of the existence of dogmen. So I went straight to that because that's what I've had similar experiences with. Did your history of having paranormal experiences have any effect on you coming to the conclusion it was a demonic entity or? Is that something that you decided just from having the experience? Uh, a little bit of both. My history of it kind of gave a foundation because I, I knew what it felt like to be around something that was incredibly dark and harmful. But that experience was like the most powerful one I had had. So it was definitely... It was something else. I, I think I think deep down I knew it was not just something that was potentially demonic or spiritual, but also something that was at least partially physical. Do you think it would be better or worse if dogmen are demonic in origin? That's a really tough question. <laughs> because if they are demonic in origin, then it could be better. Because there are rules to those beings. There is demonology as a, a very legitimate thing. And there are rules to how they can interact with individuals. So in that sense, it could be better because it's not as random. But it's also worse because, well, they're demons. But if they were just completely physical beings, it could be better because it's not some wildly dark entity and it's just an animal but also worse because animals are a lot more volatile and they don't follow any set rules necessarily so there really isn't a straightforward answer to that you raise some really good points and it really is a shame that growing up you had to deal with all those demonic experiences i mean kids have enough on their plate not to mention having all the experiences that you've had well Thankfully, I didn't really start having those experiences until I was like 13, 14 maybe. So thankfully, it wasn't like a early childhood thing. That probably wouldn't have formed me very well. But yes, it, it is something I've had and you kind of get used to it. And uh, interestingly enough, there's there's different settings where there are more or less abundant. For example, Halloween, 31st of October, they're everywhere. The demonic entities and stuff, they're everywhere. But on your average day, no, not really. It's, I don't think it's a very everyday thing. It's more of occasional 
and then in certain settings a lot more like that day. You said your experiences with demonic entities didn't begin until you hit your teens, but in my opinion, it's still never a good time to have an encounter with a dog man or a demonic entity or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, that's a, I can agree with that point. That's, <laughs> that would always be better not to. Oh yeah, no doubt. Do you think that all those paranormal experiences you had before you had your encounter actually helped to prepare you for that dogman encounter? Oh yeah, 100%. Because of the prior uh, events, I was kind of able to at least somewhat understand what was happening. Like I didn't go into like a, a complete cluelessness of what to do. Yeah, and it wasn't like a completely new event it was kind of similar to to stuff i felt before so yeah it sounds like it must not have been kind of a a new experience as you put it after having all those other experiences you told us about it is different new in a way because nothing like this level of event like no one expects to see a werewolf type creature no, nobody. You don't. You don't go outside, and then you you expect to see something that's out of like steampunk London TV shows or something. Oh, sure. No one expects to see a dog man until they do. Before you had your encounter, had you even heard about dog men? And if so, what were your thoughts on their existence? I actually had. I had heard of. I didn't know they were like a a thing thing, like a common, if you will thing but i had heard from a couple of friends that had claimed to have some sort of experience with something similar to that uh I'm not going to go too much in detail with that one because it's it's their event but i didn't really put too much thought towards it i didn't necessarily uh like cross it off as not being possible because I don't like crossing things off as being impossible because a lot of things that may seem impossible are possible in the world. But I hadn't actually kind of processed it in my head to think, oh yeah, maybe this is a very common thing. But yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah, it's all too easy if you haven't had a dog man encounter to watch shows on them and think, okay, yeah, this is just entertainment. People say they've had these encounters, but I'm sure they really haven't. That is, until you actually see one with your own two eyes. and That's when it becomes all too real, so I definitely get it. All right, Santiago, please tell us about your encounter now. Give us every last detail that comes to mind. All right, Vic. My encounter happened in a small town in northern Ontario. Well, central northern Ontario, called Barry's Bay in Canada. And in this town, there is, well, there's the college I went to, but in this town, there are a lot of very condensed streets, but all around the town on three sides is forest. And then there's a lake to one side. So you're kind of, when you're in there, you're kind of surrounded by thick tree line on all the borders of the town. In between there are, it's pretty it's pretty open in general. In between there's just mostly residential streets and it's pretty flat. But around it it's very it's very dark and very forested. There's a massive provincial federal park bigger than some European countries, like twenty five minute drive to the left. And Sometimes you can hear wolf packs at night howling from that direction. In general, it's a very, it's very isolated rural area. So my encounter happened when I was, I was living in a house in the middle, more or less, of the town. But it was, it was a bit of a darker area. The lighting was not very... It was not very well lit in that area of the town. There was maybe a couple street lights, but a lot of darkness in that area. And not because of, uh, I'm not talking about like a scary 
like spiritual dark necessarily at first it's physically that was just not a very good setup for lighting so what that meant is when it was at night and if you were walking around the town it was pretty well lit it was very comfortable actually to walk around but then when you got to this area sometimes you couldn't really see that much more in front of you with detail and because of this there was a lot of wildlife in, the, in that area of the town everything from groups of deer to uh like a lot of foxes stray cats everything and maybe that's why this dogman was in that area it's a lot darker than other parts of the town so what my girlfriend's house at the time looked like because she lived in a in a house with uh i think four other housemates it was at the foot of a hill the tallest hill in the area within the town there was a water tower above it too so it was at the foot of that hill with a kind of secluded property on one side which was pretty isolated and we didn't really know who lived there and then on the other sides there was just more houses but then facing it was the tallest hill in the town and that hill had absolutely zero lights on it it was every night it was just completely dark and we would often see the groups of deer gather along the foot of the hill so when you kind of stepped out of the house you almost felt like you were in a little like a bowl surrounded by just the dark forest so that day what happened was i had gone over to her house and after having dinner and chatting with her housemates we we watched a movie and i don't remember what movie it was it ended pretty late it was like around 2 a.m and by that time her housemates had gone to bed so i figured okay well it's time to walk home and i thankfully only lived two blocks away a very small distance maybe like in general maybe like a 200 180 meter walk turn that into feet however you will <laughs> but uh it wasn't very far and i was kind of blessed for that because the winter in this area would drop ridiculous amounts of snow sometimes and it was nice to not have to trek too much to get home anyways consistently ever since the beginning of having to do that walk after dropping her home and going back to my my buddies in my house consistently that walk was always just it wasn't very comfortable it was again as i said earlier it was very dark in that area and there wasn't that many trees on the second block towards my house. There was mostly houses, but some trees to the side. But it just wasn't lit at all. So it was always really uncomfortable because you felt like you were being watched. And because a lot of the population in this town, I think, either works with like lumber or commuting or construction those types of industries often the people get up really early and they leave and then they you don't really see them move around very much so it was really eerie because the houses you knew there was people in them but you rarely ever saw any movement so it's almost like walking through a little ghost town in that part of the of the town and i remember i'd always get back to my house and open the door and just be relieved and see the buddies and like the the warmth and just be relieved that okay that's over for tonight so anyway the night of the encounter after i'd watched the we watched the movie and said goodbye i started to pack my stuff and put on my jacket and shoes and everything and then i first i just i remember just feeling a little a little weird feeling a little weird about just uneasy about something i didn't know what it was i couldn't put my finger on it 
So then got to the door, walked outside, and in front of her house, there was a big hedge that covered two sides of the property. And it was the side that was to the right of the, the foot of the hill. So you were kind of in a little corner, a little corner of vegetation. So I remember I walked out of the house and very quietly, because again, I, for, I didn't know why, but I felt uneasy. I just very quietly tiptoed forward on the gravel because it was, it was a gravel driveway, which will come into play later. And just stuck my head around the hedge. I don't know why. I didn't, I don't, I, again, I don't know why I did that because it, there, it, do, it doesn't make any sense. I'd never done that before, really. But that time I stuck my head out and about 200 meters away, down the street, away from the hill, there's an intersection. And on that intersection, there's one streetlight, the brightest streetlight in that, in those little blocks. And when I looked in that direction, I saw, I was just incredibly confused because I saw what I, earlier you touched on, I thought it looked like a hellhound. And it was, it was very, it was very scary at first. It was actually right underneath my, my best friend's house, that, that streetlight. It was just standing there. So to describe what it looked like, first of all, it was on four, it was on all fours. It wasn't standing, which I think is part of the reason why I, I confused it with some sort of demonic dog or something, because it was on four legs. And it was, it was interesting. It was, so it had, it was kind of like a grayish brown, but also kind of dark color. That was the color of the fur or whatever hair. The back legs were very, very muscular, but they were kind of, they, they were, they were long, like they were, they were bent at the back like a dog's. And then as you went up the body, the waist was incredibly thin in comparison with the, like the shoulder and the back, like not obscenely thin to the point where it looked ridiculous, but it was a very thin waist, kind of like as you see with stereotypical werewolf drawings and as you go up the waist the shoulders they just started to the chest started to broaden out and the shoulders were broad it had a hunched a hunch on its back like a big hump on its back and the head i didn't see as much of the head as i would have liked because it was at an angle where i saw i saw the head but not very much in detail but I did see that it was a dog features on the head. Did have ears. It seemed like the ears were kind of flattened out back. Kind of when a German Shepherd flattens its ears or something like that. And the facial features were... It wasn't like a ridiculously long snout. Like a dog that has a very, very long snout. But it wasn't flat either. It was a, kind of like a in-between snout. And thankfully, I wasn't close enough, nearly close enough, to see in detail, like, the eyes or the teeth or the the claws in detail, something like that. And I, I'm very thankful. I thank God about that because I feel that my experiences afterwards would have been a lot different if it was very, very in-person, up-close, face-to-face. But he did get closer later, but we'll get to that. But I did remember seeing claws. And they were pretty big. They were big. But not like comically large. I've seen a lot of pictures and and videos and movies and stuff where the the dogmen or the werewolf claws are just this ridiculous monstrosity where they're the size of their head and no, it was just kind of like a what you'd picture a large animal's claws to be, but a bit bigger. So, 
it was on all fours. And when I saw it, I, I, I froze. I, I kind of froze. At first, just saw it out of confusion. Because you don't expect to see something like this. And then I saw it. It was just sitting completely still. And then it just started walking. It started walking not towards me, but towards the other side of the road where it was a little darker. But it was on all fours. I guess not walking. It was more crawling or whatever on all fours. And it just very slowly, with no speed whatsoever, this this thing, whatever it was, it was so in control of its presence and it was had so much confidence in its presence that it didn't care being underneath the brightest street light in the in that area it didn't care being still it didn't care about walking slowly it had no rush and it had no care in the world of what or who looked at it so it kind of reminded me of the videos i've seen of massive like grizzly bears just walking through a town where they know that they are the apex predator there and that no matter what no one can do anything about it so then it started walking towards the other side of the street and disappeared into the shadows so after this i was very surprised it very scared too but i didn't know what to make out of it so then I, I very quickly went back inside the house and honestly just <laughs> locked all the doors and told my girlfriend what I saw. And thankfully, she also has some similar experiences in her life with a little bit of the paranormal. And she's very understanding. So she didn't just write it off and she did see my my concern and i remember just sitting down and just kind of freezing on the couch trying to understand what just happened what just went through my mind i didn't know what to do i knew i had to walk back to my house i had my my buddies there and my bed and my room everything but i had a feeling that if i left to walk home that i wouldn't make it it's it's weird i've had that a few times in my life but i had a feeling that if i stepped out of that door i might not actually make it back to my house and I'm aware, Vic, that from what you've told me, that the percentage of people that actually get attacked by these things is incredibly low. However, that still didn't change the fact that I, I was, I had a feeling, like I had a very deep feeling that those types of feelings have not been wrong in the past. And I didn't want to test that. So I ended up. We, I waited on the couch for a bit, and what ended up happening was that I decided to just wait on the couch because I didn't, I didn't want to face that thing. The direction it walked away from the light was towards, more or less, the house where I lived. So because of that... It was just such an element of the unknown because if it had walked in the other direction or if I had seen it even like clearly walk down the street further from where I was, if I had seen it go like towards the other side of the town and disappear, I probably could have made it like made an effort to go those two blocks home quickly. But the fact it went in the direction towards my house changed everything because then it was like what if it's right around the corner so i remember sitting there not knowing what to do and then 
I just started feeling this, this, this urge to just, okay, let me just, let me just go check again. So this time with the door open, the door of the house was open. I didn't shut it this time. Stepped outside, poked my head around the hedge again. And it wasn't there. And part of me wanted to go again, as I said, go home. But the other part of me was like, no, you, you shouldn't. Something bad's going to happen. So even though I didn't see it, I just decided, okay, I'm going back in. I'm going back inside. And then that's when it got worse. Because after I got back inside, I shut the door, I just sat back down on the couch, and then I started feeling this incredible sense of darkness and quite literally feeling like I was being hunted. And it came out of nowhere. It was just like a truck hitting you, just bam. And I remember telling my my girlfriend like, "Do do you feel this? Do you do you feel that?" Like and she, and she said, "Yeah." And so I I didn't know what it was at first, but we just we just sat still. And then all of a sudden, I heard the gravel, the gravel in the driveway moving, like steps, kind of like the gravel being thrown up, steps on the floor. And I knew there was, there was no one that shouldn't be happening. All of our housemates were asleep. We were inside. No one ever really went to that part of the town. There was no reason for anyone to be there. No one, no one ever really goes there. The only traffic in that area was either asleep or us on the couch. And it didn't sound like, uh, it could be like a deer or something like that. It was very, pronounced and the disturbance was pretty obvious so that kind of changed things because all of a sudden as I said earlier I felt like I was just being hunted and trapped and I felt this thing essentially slowly circle the house I don't know if it was for five minutes or for 15 minutes it was kind of a blur maybe it was your <laughs> your brain's attempt at rationalizing what happened or something but during that time i just remember feeling this thing just pacing around the house a very small house i'll be honest just pacing around it and more than once i heard like the gravel moving from these steps and and just felt it we sat in an, in an area where none of the sight lines from windows could see us because it, it just it felt like it was trying to look through a window or something and it was the most scared i've ever been in my life i think there's a lot of fears in the world there's a lot of fears everything from like viruses as we're experiencing to wars, terrorism, anything like that. But there are, in my opinion, very few things that invoke such a level of fear as the primal feeling of being hunted. I think that's very instinctual, but that's what turned on in my head, was this, this feeling of there's a predator. You are not the predator. You are not even close to being the competition for the predator. You need to hide and stay still. Maybe it was that, that level of just human instinct that allowed our ancestors to survive. But because of that, I just remember just completely freezing up. Just sitting on the couch, completely pressed back onto the couch, and I just not being able to move, just hoping that if I, and again, it doesn't make any sense in hindsight because as you have brought up, Vic, this thing could have very clearly kicked the door down, as you've told me before, and we wouldn't have been able to stop it at all. It could have gone through the walls, through the 
through the window. It doesn't make any sense in hindsight, but but yeah, that's what we did. We both just sat there. We were completely still. And I think it's it's kind of like the brain's reaction to such a such an event where it tries to make sense of it. But I don't know if it was like five minutes or fifteen or twenty minutes. But we just sat there and just felt this thing just prowling around the house, horror movie style, and just didn't know what to do. So just sat completely still, and. I remember eventually feeling kind of the in- immense darkness and like evil feeling just starting to leave. And at that point, it was a little bit more comforting, but it was such was the kind of magnitude of it that I still didn't move. I didn't even remotely think of walking back home because I didn't want to experience that on the way back. And so what ended up happening was (laughs) I fell asleep completely upright on the couch, which I've never really done before. But I was like my back to the wall and just fell asleep right there. I ended up waking up pretty early. It was at like 6. I put an alarm for like 5.45 or 6 or something like that. Because I didn't want to wake up and have like all our housemates there and stuff. Because this is a very a very conservative college. And it's not exactly incredibly supported to spend the night at your girlfriend's house. So... Because of that, I woke up quite early in an attempt to go back to my house after the sun was up. And so that's essentially what happened. I woke up and it was just past sunrise. And I remember just putting my my stuff together. It was also around early November, if I remember right. So that's the timeline of the time of year where it was so there wasn't really snow right there which in a way i think is a win and a loss because with the snow you could have seen like the massive tracks and stuff and that would have been interesting but also would have been scarier would have made it a lot more kind of real because your your brain with these events almost tries to tell you that it's not really a thing yeah, so I walked outside and just remembered like looking around the hedge again and seeing nothing and I remembered also that during the night I called my best friend because my best friend lived in the house that was right beside where that dog man was on all fours. And I just remember during the night calling him and asking like there was something outside your house, it was massive, uh, it it looked like a huge like dog or was it like a like a bear or something? I was trying to not have him hang up immediately. And I asked him like go look out the balcony and see if it's still around. <laughs> Understandably he didn't because I called him at like three AM. But uh he's like, Oh, it's probably a bear and then and he went back to sleep. But I remember that during the morning, just chuckled a bit to myself. But yeah, and what was interesting was that during the morning I didn't feel any sort of negative or dark like presence or anything. I just it was totally different to the night before. So I, I was able to just successfully walk home and just walk into my house and shut the door behind and kinda of be thankful but also just it's kind of surreal. It was like did that really happen? And it did, but it was at the time it, it felt weird. But um, yeah, it was definitely unexpected. But in general, that is more or less the events that happened that that night. It can be very difficult to remember the tiniest and tiniest of details because, as I said, like your your brain tries to rationalize stuff and 
almost seems to block things out to make it easier. But that is, to my knowledge, the events of what happened there. After you saw it walk away, here you thought your dogman encounter was over, but it wasn't. That's not good. Of all the directions it could have gone, I hate to hear that it headed in the direction of your home. That must have made for a rough night of sleep for you. See, the thing is, not really. (laughs) Because I don't know why, but I think it was just, my mind was just so kind of, in a way, confused as to what was happening that after I felt it kind of go away and stopped hearing it go around the house, I actually had a really, like, well, not necessarily pleasant, but it wasn't a bad sleep at all. It was kind of like, it was, it almost felt like the body just kind of went on autopilot and was like, okay, let's rest, and that's it. But, yeah, I didn't really have any dream or, or anything, just... But it's like the body went on autopilot with survival mode and just did its own thing, yeah. And yes, it did go towards my house, which was not a very pleasant thing, because as I said, if it would have gone visibly the other direction, it could have maybe been different. Oh, I'd say, yeah, that definitely wasn't a good thing. If you were peeking around that hedge, looking at it about 200 meters away, did it ever do anything that gave you the impression that it might have seen you before you ducked back out of its view? Well, here's the thing. No. And that's the interesting part because, well, 200 meters is rough, but it might have been like closer, like 160, 180, something like that. But that was one of the parts that fascinated me because it didn't look at me or anything, thankfully, because that that wouldn't have been a great memory. But that's one of the reasons that I think that these creatures are not just animals and they have some sort of either like demonic or dark presence or entity because it never once made any physical gesture that it saw my head just poke around the corner and look at it 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 had its ears flattened back it it didn't look it didn't like do anything it just very slowly with purpose walked across the road into the shadows but then a few minutes later it was prowling around my house so it very very obviously knew that i had seen it because it was standing in the same spot i had i well i could hear it standing in the same spot where i had stood like minutes beforehand so that's actually i'd like to hear what you think about that one because that was something that interested me that i'd never understood because Something had to go on in the background. How could it know that I was looking at it if it never made a single slight physical gesture that it saw me, but it was right there a few minutes later? And it also couldn't have seen me. It was looking at a in, a, in another direction. I wasn't even in the direct line of sight or close to it. Well, that's one of the creepiest things about dogmen. They just seem to know when you're looking at them. Has anything happened that makes you think it might have followed you home that morning? Um, no, I don't think so, thankfully, because as dark as that area is during the night, during the day, it's it's totally different. Obviously, there's there's sunlight and it's bright, but the trees are not necessarily as thick as they could be in that part. So during the night, of course, the trees are are there, and with the darkness, you can't really see anything. But because they're not really as thick as they could be, during the day, it's pretty easy to see, even onto the side of the hill, or even partway, uh, like, along the way up the hill and uh, through the trees in the area between my girlfriend's house and my house. So no, during that morning, I was looking around and Again, I didn't feel the same presence as the night before, so I wasn't really thinking that there was something around because it was very obvious, the feeling beforehand. But no, and during the walk home, there was no feeling. And because of the not incredibly thick trees, you could really look around. And I didn't see anything. And in the days, I never really had a visual sighting of it again, no. Well, I'm sure you were looking around when you were walking home that morning. 
Yeah, you yeah. must have been on a swivel. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I can't say I'll blame you. Before we move on, if you've had a dogman encounter of your own and would like to speak with me about it, whether in private or on the show, either way is fine, please go to dogmanencounters.com and submit a report. I'd love to hear from you. All right, now that I've shared that with you, let's get back to the show. Even though there wasn't any snow outside, did you still look for any prints? See, I don't really remember. I remember I, I had priority number one, which was just get home. Oh, wait, I do. I do remember. Yes, I do remember afterwards. I went to see if there was some sort of print, but it it wasn't really a possibility. It was it was very hard ground like November in northern Ontario, Canada is very it's either raining in that area or it's very hard ground. So there wasn't really any of a possibility of a print. And then on gravel, you, you can't really have a footprint unless it's like a dinosaur level creature or something so yeah there was no there was nothing with that i see well i'm glad you still looked that's good when you heard it walking around your girlfriend's home that night did it sound like it was on two feet or four i i don't know i don't think that's something i could differentiate between i'll be honest i'm gonna guess two because when an animal is on all fours, obviously they spread their weight out more and they're stealthier. That goes from everything from a cat to like a lion or a dog or something. They're stealthier wolves, but for it to be stepping and the gravel to move loud enough for the sound to actually travel through the closed door, or the window closed and actually get to us on the couch. I don't think it could have been on all fours because it was, it looked so stealthy and like smooth moving when it was on all fours. So it was probably stepping on two legs. But again, that's a total guess. No, I understand. If you don't know what to listen for, then you don't know what to listen for. No harm, no foul. Did you ever have any second thoughts about telling your girlfriend about that encounter, even though she's had paranormal experiences of her own? No, I didn't have a single doubt. I don't think you'd be a very healthy relationship if uh, if you saw something like this and you couldn't trust your significant other to at least listen. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, I was happy to be able to share it. Well, it was nice to be able to share it and, and be listened to. And from what I've talked to her since then, it's interesting because she's explained that she doesn't remember too much of what went on that night. So it's it's very possible that her mind might have just blocked out most of that experience, which is very understandable. And I know that happens a lot with uh, a lot of these types of events, be that with like war or a sighting or anything. You're right about what you said. I'm so glad that she's there to support you and you knew that you could tell her about that experience. That's great. You said that you already knew about Dogman before you had that experience. How long did it take you to realize it was a Dogman that you saw, though? Well, let me clarify. I didn't really know that Dogmen were a thing. Like, I didn't know they were legitimately a type of entity or being or whatever they are that walked around commonly enough for a show to exist on YouTube. What I did know, though, was that a couple of my friends, one in particular, had experienced in the past what he described as a werewolf. And again, I don't really remember much of that story he, he told me because he doesn't like to talk about it. It was very personal. Yes, I remember hearing about that and thinking, okay, maybe. Maybe stuff like that is plausible. I'm not immediately taking it as gospel, but I'm not discarding the idea at all. And then it just kind of went to the back of my mind. Didn't really think of that at all. And then after the the sighting I had, 
I honestly just went with the whole demonic dog idea because that's what felt the most correct. That's what felt the most uh, appropriate. And with the circumstances and the prior experience I've had, that's what it felt right as. But then it wasn't until like a year and a bit afterwards when I started realizing. No, it was a couple months. It was probably between six months and a year to start realizing like, oh, maybe it was a dog man because then I found your show and I started listening to it and I listened to it primarily to try and compare my own experiences with those of your other guests and see if what I had seen and experienced lined up with the experiences of some of your other guests and a lot of it did and I started more and more to realize that this was probably what I saw. I'm a little confused because in our first conversation, you told me that you thought the dogmen were physical beings, but physical beings with a demonic aspect. Why do you say that? What do you mean by that? Yeah, I I haven't changed my stance on that at all. I do think that they are a physical being, but they have a demonic aspect to them. I yeah, I never I never changed my stance on that because the thing is What I am not sure of is the percentage, if you will. Like, I'm not sure if it's 50-50 or it's like 80-20 or something like that of how much is physical and how much isn't. The reason I say that is because there are parts of it where it's undeniably physical. You could see it. You could hear it. If I was close enough, (laughs) God forbid, you could touch it. But you could also feel it and you could feel the potent evil around it. And it somehow knew to just hunt me down around, like prowling around the house after not even me being in its line of sight and looking at it for a short time frame. So there are parts of it that are physical beyond doubt, but parts where it would, feels like it's spiritual or demonic and i know from our prior conversation you have some similar opinions when it comes to not all that they do can be explained as physical you're right yeah definitely they do a lot of things that are just impossible to explain by saying that they have to be flesh and blood there are a lot of things that it's just really hard to wrap your head around you said that dogman was huge. How big was it, though, on all fours, in your opinion? On all fours, the top of its shoulder hunch was probably close to around six feet while it was on all fours. Ooh. So when it's standing up, probably at least 11 feet tall, maybe 12. Yeah, that's a big one. If it was six feet tall or so at the shoulder, then, yeah, more than likely you're dealing with a 12-footer. In our first conversation, you also told me that it's almost as if your brain has been rewired now that you had that experience. Why do you say that? Yeah. After that experience, it's it's really interesting because I think slowly, with time, it goes away. And with time eventually it'll hopefully completely go away but ever since that experience closer to when it did happen in fall of 2019 afterwards whenever i would be whenever i'd see like a like a forest like a dark forest at night or or even just like a really dark area at night the first thing that would come to my mind is this thing could be out there and to a degree, it, it, it still happens today. Like, again, I think for a lot of people, it just takes a long time. Even this, this summer when I was up at a cabin with some friends and they all went inside to get some food and I was at the, on the campfire, not on the campfire, but around the campfire. And I remember just looking into the dark tree line. It was like, midnight and looking into the dark tree line and just thinking it could be out there and then i went back inside so it's a it, it is a definitely a, like a journey it'll take a long time 
Well, there's no denying the fact that a dogman encounter will change you. That's a given. You told me that you think you might have been in the presence of a dogman or dog men since you had your encounter. Why do you think that? I remember telling you that there was a pack, herd, of deer. Not a pack. <laughs> a herd of deer. And there was a small group, probably like four or five of them, around my girlfriend's house that were very common in that area. And yeah, I remember that we found, well, one of my friends found a severed uh, deer leg at the, on the trail behind the house where I was staying at. And where I was staying, there was, a, there was another hill behind where I was staying. Not as tall as the one in front of my girlfriend's house, but it kind of formed like a little bit of a of a valley. Very small hill in, in relative, not anything close to like Appalachians or anything like that, but enough. So, yeah, and then there was forest there and there was a trail through that area. And yeah, they found the, a severed deer leg in that trail. And I remember afterwards noticing that there was one less deer in the little group that liked to hang around my girlfriend's house. So, again, maybe it was a rogue uh, lone wolf from the federal park that was like 25 minutes away to the left from one of those packs. Maybe it was just a roadkill that a fox or something like that took a piece of. Or, but maybe it was the dogman that hunted one of the deer. Yeah, it's entirely possible, but yeah, I hope it was just a wolf that did that. You told us how densely forested the area around your town is. Have you heard about any other incidents that might have involved a dogman coming into town? Well, thankfully, in that town in particular, no, not really. I have not heard of anything like that. I no longer live there. I live closer to Toronto, and I no longer go to school there. But yeah, while I was up there and even now, I didn't hear anything of any interaction. Out of uh, using the website from your show, though, and the, the sighting map, I do know that there was a sighting in a town called Bancroft, which is about an hour away from that town, 45 minutes away, to the uh, slight southeast. So at least there are some other sightings in that area I know of. And I am aware of, uh, I have heard recordings of people in that town that's about 40 minutes away from where I was living. I've heard recordings of people claiming to record these dogmen howls and, and noises. And there are other stories and stuff of sightings, but none of my personal friends or anything I've heard personally Unfortunately, I wouldn't be surprised if there were a lot more encounters in that area than you know about. Well, it's about time for us to get out of here, Santiago, but before we do, do you have any closing comments you'd like to share? Well, I'd like to, first of all, thank you for having me and uh, for listening, and all of you viewers as well. But I'd like to kind of emphasize something that you told me, Vic, which was that if it wanted to hurt me or my girlfriend or her housemates or anything it could have very easily done that snap of a finger gone through the door or window wall whatever and just created like a horror movie but it didn't and as you said i think it's just it's something that gets its high if you will from scaring people i think that's another similarity one of the reasons I think it may be linked to some demonic thing, because that, that is something in common that a lot of those entities have. They just they like to scare people and get a high off of that. Another reason that I think they may have something to do with the occult or the demonic is that there is a very commonly known thing, which is that 3 a.m. is the witching hour an hour where a lot of paranormal things happen and, and a lot of dark stuff happen. If you have any sort of religious background, you can link that to that 
in the Bible and scripture is where the hour where Jesus died. And so the opposite at 3 a.m. is seen as like the witching hour. Very important for those kind of like dark things. And so that is something that was in the back of my mind because during that time period is when I saw and experienced this. And not during any other time period. And again, during that time period is when I have experienced other sort of paranormal events around my house in that area. Not dogman related, but similar. So maybe that has something to do with what these things are. Who knows? Yeah, it's entirely possible. I mean, after all, you're not the first eyewitness who's drawn ties between dogmen and having encounters during the witching hour. So, you know, like I said, there might be something to that. But having said that, I want to thank you so much for coming on and sharing the details of that experience with us. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you so much and have a great night.